Welcome back to News Geelong as we move into the world of Geelong sport with Mitch Scoop Cleary. The great game of Aussie rules footy is back for season 2012, Mitch. Thanks, Rollo. New Geelong Falcons coach Andy Althorpe has stepped into the role vacated by now Melbourne assistant Aaron Greaves. He speaks about the upcoming season and the wealth of talent looking for a spot on an AFL list. Coach for season 2012, how are you enjoying uh, the pre-season at the moment and getting the boys in shape? Yeah, it's been great so far. Certainly uh, a, a di much different role to being a line coach, so having to uh, oversee all of the program, so it's been, yeah, it's been great. Um, I, I feel we've got the boys to a really good fitness level, and now they're getting a good handle on how we wanted to play. You've been involved since 2006, how, as you said, jumping up into the senior coach and now being around this place, it must feel it's a good step up into the senior role. Yeah, it's great, great opportunity. Uh, I feel that I've got a good feel for TAC footy now and how it's played and how we need to get the boys to play and, and how, the, how the program should run. So, yeah, I think I've got a good handle on it now. Yeah. Gary Hocking and Aaron Greaves, a few coaches in recent times have gone stepped up to AFL coaching. How do you feel following on from their footsteps? Oh, I'm not really too focused with that. I'm more worried about getting the best program we can for the boys who are part of our squad and uh, making sure we can make them develop and reach their full potential. Mick said uh, in the papers recently that it's the best bottom age group he's seen for a while. How do you see that and as well as the top age the list you've got at the moment? Yeah, it's, probably, it's a fair, fair call. It's a pretty exciting group. Don't want to put too much pressure on them. Um, obviously, we had nine kids play in the under-16 Vic countryside last year, so I, I was part of that, actually. I was midfield coach for that, so I got to work with them. Um, there are a talented bunch of boys, but they've still got a bit of work ahead of them. We still have to work on certain areas of their game, and, yeah, we don't want to put too much pressure on them. Just let them get out there and play and, and learn about their first year at TAC footy. The question in pre-season is always uh, comparing to the year before. How do, they, how do they rate to the year before? And in both fitness and skill-wise at this stage of the year? Uh, we feel with Levi as high performance manager being in for the second year, um, we've got a much better handle on their fitness, so we, we feel got them to a better level. Um, we've, we've adjusted a lot of the training for the, for the first year players so that they do a, a restricted amount of running so that uh, we, we, they, we can get their bodies used to training during pre-season, get them used to running at the levels that are required for TAC. So we've built them up where the guys who've been in the program for two years have had a, probably, uh, a bit harder in the running side of things, but yeah, we're getting there. The question also is the number of draftees. I know you don't want to put too many pressure on boys at this stage of the year, but how do you see this, this year's crop of uh, top age under 18s uh, going through? Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting year. It's hard to, hard to say at this stage, but yeah, obviously that's part of the, what the program's about is getting kids drafted. So with the 19 year olds as well, we've got a good crop of 19 year olds in, a very talented group, uh, and we think we can get yeah, some results with them, hopefully. There's always a question of the APS boys um, going off to play for the grammar and, and college. How do they? look at this stage of the year and uh, when they get going, will there be enough to, to cover their absence? Yeah, certainly it certainly will be and that's all part of the program. We understand that. We have to accommodate for that. Whether it's the grammar boys or the college boys, we, we tend to accommodate for that. You also got St Joey's school footy during the week on Wednesdays once the seniors gets on the way. So you've got to take that into consideration too. You've got to watch your boys' workloads, make sure they're right and they're going to be able to play at you know, a decent level when it comes around to game day. And we're just going to be careful with them because we know that they're not going to miss too many Saturdays where they're not playing the college and grammar boys and then we've got to be careful with the Joey's kids too playing on a Wednesday during the week. We, we need to make sure that we're not overloading them too much. Yeah. Off and racing, favoured only fair to begin Deville showing good speed out. Lisa and Ferrari Bale first over to the rails, leads at the judge the first time from Dale. Bale pushing through and wanting to get off the track there and taking our Lisa with it. Our Presley just behind him and there's Deville winding up. On the inside there came uh, LaRocco, well back was Barbara Bale and Al Prisley just in front of it but off the back Ferrari Bale motoring four in front Dale Bale out and after it followed by DeVille and further back was LaRocco into the straight though Ferrari Bale is well clear it's going to win Ferrari Bale all the way scores well after returning from Etihad Stadium with an inexperienced side and one from one Geelong coach Chris Scott believes a number of younger players benefited, benefited from the hit outs yeah, well, we were really pleased with Josh Walker as a, as a key forward last week and Mitch Brown showed some good signs as well. So um, Hawkins can still fit back um, into a forward line with those two guys in it. Um, but we've got Podsy Adley to come back. Um, Trent West has played some good footy down there. Um, we have some good mid-sized forwards as well. So we're a little way away from deciding what our best um, dynamic is going to be for round one. But there are some good signs from young players that we were confident could play well, but we weren't exactly sure. Scott said Stephen Motlop didn't do his chances of a round one spot any harms last Friday night. Yeah, we don't look at um, 
um, replacing players like for like necessarily, but um, a few of our guys took some small steps forward on the weekend. Um, very difficult to play your way into our round one team after the first weekend of the NAB Cup, but um, Motlop didn't go backwards, that's for sure. Premiership player Josh Hunt has been handed a two-match suspension, one he can serve during the NAB Cup. Scott saying there is no grey area in the sling tackle perception. I think it was appropriate. Josh knows the rules, clearly. We know the rules uh, and you know the punishment was appropriate. Josh needs to change his technique in that area and we're working really hard on that. We don't have um, any issue with the way the rules are worded or adjudicated. Will you sit down with Josh and take him to that step? Yeah, already have. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's the second time he's been suspended for that sort of tackle, so clearly we're failing in, in some regard there. But it's only it's a minor thing that we, we're confident we can remedy, and I'll reiterate, we have absolutely no problem with the, the way the, the rules are worded. No, there's no grey area. No, you can't pin a guy's arms and then sling him headfirst into the ground. That's really clear. You can tackle really hard in one motion and take them to ground as long as you don't drive their head into the ground. I think it is as simple as it can possibly get. Uh, and it's not difficult for Josh. He under understands it and he's really confident that he can play within the rules. That's all for sport this Wednesday night. But for now, it's back to you, Rollo. Thank you, Mitch. And now for all the weather expected for Geelong and the surf coast over the next six days. It's good evening to our scintillating Sophie Miller. Good evening, Graham. Cooler weather for the next few days with a mixture of sunshine and showers as we take a look at the weather ahead. Tomorrow, Thursday, will be a partly cloudy day with isolated showers or drizzle, drizzle patches and a top of 21. Friday will continue with the cloud and patchy rain with northeast winds and a top of 23. To start off the first weekend in March, Saturday will be cloudy with patchy rain continuing with a top of 25. Sunday will be partly cloudy with isolated showers with a top of 25. On, a, on Monday we can expect partly cloudy conditions with isolated showers and a top of 23. While Tuesday will also continue with cloudy periods and an isolated shower and a top of 23. Today we saw cloudy periods with patchy drizzle on the surf coast with late morning from the late morning extended throughout the day with a top of 24. That's the weather outlook for Geelong and the Surf Coast. Enjoy the rest of your evening and it's back to you, Graham. Thank you, Sophie. And thank you for joining us on News Geelong this Wednesday evening. To Shirley Lewis from Belmont, get well soon, Shirley. And remember, take your time and smell the flowers. From all the team at News Geelong, enjoy the rest of the evening and a very good night. Thank you.